everyone, my name is Miranda and today I am here to do my June book wrap up for all of you because if you can believe it or not, the first month of summer is already gone. Just gone. This month I managed to read seven books and they were some very, very good books. And first up, I read the one that I pretty much think everyone read and that is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Moss. This actually came out in May so it's probably... Eh, it's probably on a lot of people's May wrap-up, so I'm actually a month behind. But this is the sequel to A Court of Thorns and Roses, which I thought was okay, but I didn't really like it, mostly because I hated Tamlin. Hated him so much. And if you're playing the drinking game where every time I say that I hate Tamlin, take a shot right now. The sequel was so, so good. First of all, it's freaking huge. Like, look how big this is. It's 624 pages. And it just, there's not much I can say about it because it's so spoilery. Just because it, it goes a complete opposite way of what I was thinking and what I think most people were thinking. Like, it's just literally something that never, ever entered your mind when considering this book. So I'm very pleased with how this book went. And I'm very, very, very much looking forward to the third one next year. I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. And if you want to see my spoilery thoughts on it, I'll also did a video with my friend Jess so I'll leave that down below in the description box for you if you want. Just good luck because we scream a lot. After that I wanted to read some more contemporary summary reads since it is summer. I just wanted to get like a jump start on all the summary reads and kind of get out all the contemporary ones I've been wanting to read. So I started with Summer Days and Summer Nights which is an anthology of 12 different summery love stories edited by Stephanie Perkins with a bunch of different authors like Veronica Roth, Cassandra Clare, all these cool ones. So I also really enjoyed this one. It wasn't, I feel like, I go back and forth if I like this one more or less than the other one my true love gave to me. I think overall this one was more consistent with the stories. Like they all seem to mesh more than My True Love gave to me, but I definitely give this one like less 5 out of 5 star stories in this one. Overall though, I gave the whole book 4 out of 5 stars, and if you want to see my thoughts on each individual story in this, I also have a review for that that I'll leave in the description box as well, but I just think it's a really cute summary book, so if you're gonna read it, read it now at least. Next, I read Nerve by Jean Janine Ryan, which is a book that is being turned into a movie actually in July, so I wanted to read this before I saw the movie, and Nerve is about this game that exists on an app where basically it's truth or dare without the dare, which I hate that description because that's not truth or dare, that's just dare, but that's the best way to describe it. And this girl V signs up for it to try and get out of her shell and be more in the spotlight. And the dares quickly start escalating and getting more and more dangerous. And the whole thing just becomes very twisted and very dark. And it was just a really short, action-y, like, really fun thrill ride read. Like, it only took me about a day to get through, but it was super interesting and super thrill ridey. And, like, I was, like, biting my nails, reading it. I was like, what's going to happen? Oh my gosh. So I'm definitely excited for the movie because I think the movie is going to take the general plot of this and really amp it up and make it even more terrifying and more thrillery. And I am so, so excited. And I would give this book four and a half out of five stars. So after that, continuing with my summer theme, I read The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, which is such a cute book. I mean, look at the cover. It's got dogs. It's got perfection. It's just beautiful. It's about this girl, Andy, whose summer plans are changed when her father, who is a politician, is involved in the scandal and now she can't go away on her internship like she thought she would, so she decides to do dog walking instead, and she meets this boy Clark, and it's just super cute, and like it's hard to describe, but it's just, it's a book like most Morgan Matson books are about family, and friendship, and first loves, and romances, and just kind of finding yourself in ways you never thought you would, in places you never thought you would, so I really liked it, and would definitely give it 5 out of 5 stars. It's one of the best books I read this year. I love it so, so much. Another great book I read this month was My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows, which is a retelling of the story of Lady Jane Grey, who was this queen in England for nine days, and then she got her head chopped off, so... It sucks. But they did a twist on it, an alternative history version where in this England, people who turn into animals, like can transform into animals, exist and there's a strife between people who can't and are hunting them and people who turn into animals and are kind of resisting this being hunted and being killed. And Jane is caught up in this embroil along with Edward and her husband who happens to also change into an animal, except he can't control it, so he's um... He's a horse for half the day, yeah. So it's just all this crazy cool stuff that you think sounds absolutely ridiculous, but reading it, it's hysterical. And Jane is such like a feminist, beautiful character. I absolutely love her. So I definitely love this book and I would also give it five out of five stars. It's another one of my new favorites. It's it's just amazing. Definitely, definitely pick it up. I also got to read an arc this month, which was Diplomatic Immunity by Brody Ashton. And this one comes out in September. It's about this girl who is kind of having financial troubles with her family, so she gets this scholarship to attend this really elite school with a bunch of, like, foreign dignitaries, stu 
kids and stuff like that and she wants to write this big expose so she can get a really big scholarship to get her into a good college for journalism and she wants to write it on the foreign kids who have diplomatic immunity which basically means that they can get away with committing crimes and doing stuff at school that the other kids can't because of who their parents are. Overall I was really looking forward to this book but it was just not the best. The writing is really good it's just the characters and the story I really didn't care for. Piper the main character is just She's really annoying. She has no filter and somehow she thinks that's like super charming and super cute and it's really, really annoying and Rafe is just like, this is so adorable that you have no filter and I'm like, do you have ears? Literally says, I like that no one talks to me the way you do. I'm like, okay, so I would give this one three out of five stars because I didn't like the story but the writing is very, very strong. Lastly this month I read Return to the Isle of the Lost by Melissa de la Cruz which is the sequel to her other series, Isle of the Lost, which I really, really liked. It was one of my favorite books of last year. And this is the descendant kids, Mal, Evie, Carlos, and Jay. They're going back to the Isle of the Lost because they've been getting threatening messages that say they need to come back. And at the same time, King Ben is dealing with some problems in the country of freak thunderstorms, earthquakes, all this stuff, and sightings of a possible monster. So they're kind of trying to put this all together. And I didn't like it as much as Isle of the Lost just because I felt like this one felt a little more kiddish. And... It also had this weird thing where like it would switch back and forth between point of views, which I hated. Like it was like we're reading a point of view from Carlos's point of view, so like we get his thoughts and then all of a sudden like we'll get Evie's thoughts. And I'm like, no, Carlos wouldn't be able to know what Evie's thoughts are right now. So that was annoying, but it only happened a couple times. Overall, I still really enjoy this book and the cover's gorgeous. And I just I just love the whole world of descendants. I think it's so cool taking these villains kids and these heroes kids and putting them together. So I would give it four out of five stars. I think this is the last one in the series though, and I'm kind of okay with that because I honestly would just rather watch the movies now. <laughs> Alright, so there you have it. Those are all the books I read. They're all spread out over my room right now that I read in June. So please feel free to leave your own books that you read in June if you read any of these books and like them or didn't like them and what books you're looking forward to reading in July. Also make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel down below to be sure to make all sorts of new videos and I will see you guys next time. Let's grab a random book. Bye!